Hey, I'm Ryan Lagod. And I'm Craig Toby. And welcome to Storytime with Ryan Lagod. And Craig Toby. Today's book is <gasps> How, How I, I Met My Monster. Monster. Written by Amanda Knoll. Illustrated by Howard McWilliam. This is actually an autobiography of how I met Craig. Hey. <laughs> let's get started. Come on, let's do that again. That's not fair. Okay. <gasps> How, How I, I Met, met My Monster. Monster. By Amanda Knoll. Illustrated by Howard McWilliam. This is actually a book about how I met Ryan. What? <laughs> hey! <laughs> gotcha! Let's get started. Doesn't feel good, does it? <laughs> how, how I, I met, met My Monster. Monster. By Amanda Knoll, illustrated by Howard McWilliam. One night, when I reached under the bed for my truck, I found this note instead. From the office of Mr. Z. Monsters. Meet here for final test, Z. Ha, my parents were obviously trying to trick me into staying in bed. I didn't believe in monsters. So I crumpled the paper, grabbed my truck and zipped over to my garage. I heard some creaking and rumbling, but I wasn't scared. Our house always made noises at night, but then a voice under the bed scolded. Stop that stomach rumbling. The child will hear you. Voices, stomach rumbling? If this was part of my parents' trick, it was pretty cool. I peered into the inky blackness. Five pairs of eyes blinked back. See, now he knows we're here. The voice sighed. One of you has broken monster rule number one. Maintain the element of surprise. This is no trick, I thought. There are monsters under my bed. Ah! <laughs> I didn't want to believe monsters were under the bed, but now there's proof. I see it. Yeah, five sets of eyes, Greg. Ten eyes. Ah! A long-necked yellow monster slid out, followed by four little monsters. Rule number two, the yellow one instructed. Never block the bed. All of you, scoot over. Hey, I realized, that one must be their teacher. I sat up straight, mesmerized by the monster parade shuffling across my bedroom. That's better, the teacher monster said. Access to the bed is clear. Now, who knows rule number three? The purple monster teetered on his tiptoes and gurgled. Get the child into bed. That's correct, Genghis. And how would you do that? Well, Mr. Z, I would roar my scariest roar. All right, give it a go. Genghis took a deep breath, opened his mouths, and let out a tiny blurp. Blurp. Stomach rumbling would have been a better chance of getting me into bed than that funny little noise, I laughed. The child is right, said Mr. Z, shaking his head. That was not sufficiently scary, Genghis. I'm sorry, you're not the best monster for this child. There was some creaking as Genghis slunk beneath the bed. Oh, we get to pick our monsters, okay. that's fun. I'm definitely doing like polka dot fur. I'm gonna go blue with a racing stripe. Hmm. And a horn. Honk honk. Okay. What? Uh, nothing? Just. Yeah. Honk honk. Yeah, yeah. Uh, cool. Honk honk. Yeah, cool. It's a horn. No, I get it. Before I could investigate where Genghis had gone, Mr. Z asked. Now, who wants to try to get the child into bed? The orange monster looked at the ceiling and the red monster looked at the floor. Only the green one looked at me. First, he stared at my toes and started drooling. Then he took a step toward me and I heard that rumbling noise again. I sprang into bed so he couldn't get my feet. Mr. Z blinked. Very unconventional, Gabe. Your stomach gurgle seemed to be what this child needs. What I needed was to make sure this little Gabe monster didn't eat my toes. Right, you three. The child is now in bed, said Mr. Z. As every monster knows, the ultimate objective is rule number four. Who can tell me what that is? The orange monster bounced and squeaked. Keep the child in bed until I fall asleep. Correct, Morgan. And how would you accomplish that? Shadow puppets, shadow puppets. She squeaked again. Gabe whistled through his nose and I snickered. But Mr. Z said, Interesting idea. Try it. Morgan hopped onto my night table and flailed her arms near my lamp. Silly shadows blobbed onto the wall and a cloud of fluffy fur tickled my nose. Ah, Morgan, stop at once, Mr. Z ordered. You're supposed to scare him, not make him sneeze. I'm sorry, but you're not a match either. 
Morgan's arms flopped to her sides and she scuttled under my bed. There was some more creaking and Morgan was gone. Okay, so next thing on my monster, I definitely want him to have like big horns, okay? Mm. Like, a, like a buffalo or something. Yeah, mine would have a seat and then another seat for a buddy to sit on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So a racing stripe, a horn, and a seat. This Blue, racing stripe, horn, honk, honk, seat, <laughs> yeah. another seat. That sounds like an interesting monster. You, you, you're thinking of a monster? Yeah, Greg, why? Uh, nothing. Good, cool honk, choice. Honk, honk, yeah. horn again. I, I, I know exactly what a horn sounds like, so you don't have to say it. You can just say honk, honk, and I'll like know that it's a horn. So let, let's try it again. Go ahead. Honk, honk. After all that sneezing, I really needed a tissue. Suddenly, a huge shadow of uncut claws loomed across my room. Awesome, I thought, and kind of scary. I froze in place. Powerful performance game, said Mr. Z. But do either of you see a problem? Oh, I know, chirped the red monster. The child is out of bed again. Correct, Abigail, Mr. Z continued. And one of you must get him back in. Let's revisit rule number one. Maintain the element of surprise. All at once, poof, the monsters vanished. Then I heard more rumbling. They were hiding in my closet. Were they hiding in my closet making noises to scare me? Ha, no, it was only my stomach grumbling. All this excitement was making me hungry. I tiptoed past the closet and peeked out the door. So far, so good, no monsters. Then I stepped over the squeaky stair and sneaked down to the kitchen. As I reached into the pantry, I heard some chattering behind me. I sure hoped it wasn't the toe-loving Gabe. I yanked open the fridge. Ha, it wasn't Gabe. It was just the red monster shivering on the shelf. Found you, I laughed. Nice try, Abigail, said Mr. Z. But this isn't working. You're not the right monster for this child. But Mr. Z, she whined. It's not my fault, he's not scared of me. I'm sorry, Abigail, let's go. Abigail clomped behind Mr. Z. When I heard the creaking, I knew she was gone. Ooh, another one down. Yeah, yeah, so anyway, my monster would also have like, you'd think I'd want sharp teeth, but I want big, like, Ooh. like flat teeth. Ooh, yeah. that's good. So my monster would have this little stand that you kick and it holds the monster up. It's like a kick stand. Like on a bike or something? What? Are you still talking about a monster, right? Yes! Okay. Blue, racing stripes, horn, honk honk, horn. Seat one, seat two, kick stand. Monster. It's a very interesting monster. It's not very scary. <laughs> have you heard this horn? Don't. Honk honk. And I know what it is, so you don't have to say it. Thank you. That was the sound of a horn. I grabbed some crackers and headed upstairs, wondering if Gabe was gone too. I munched all the way down the hall, then went into the bathroom to brush my teeth again. When I opened the door a minute later, Gabe was definitely not gone. He was right there and he was huge. I charged into my room and slammed the door. When I leapt into bed, I knew my toes were safe. Whew! I was surprised to hear breathing under my bed, ragged breathing and stomach rumbling. Hey kid, Gabe growled. Good to see ya. I pulled my covers up tight. Now, if you don't mind, I'd like to start the evening with an ominous puddle of drool. I peeked over the edge of the bed. Green ooze spread soundlessly from underneath. Then the bed quivered as Gabe unfurled his spiked tail. Well, this looks quite promising, Mr. Z noted. When I heard some more creaking, I knew Mr. Z was gone. I was alone with Gabe. Gabe loomed over my bed and began sharpening his uncut claws on my bedpost. How'd you get so big? I gasped. Rule number five, my friend, he explained. People food makes monsters grow. So thanks for the crackers. Got any toes I can munch? I scrunched in my feet so Gabe couldn't get them. This was way better than playing with trucks. No toes tonight, but you can have this, I offered, tossing a stuffed monster off the bed. Gabe dove for it. His soft, comforting snorts filled the room as he snuffled the toy. I shivered. Kid, I think this is the beginning of a beautiful friendship. 
No other monster can scare me like you, I giggled. Gabe was the monster for me. His snorts and ooze were perfect. I yawned, then shivered again. I was asleep in no time. Hey, he found his monster. Okay, last thing my monster needs is to be like nine feet tall oh, and have like a big belly. Ooh. Yeah. yeah. I just need one little light reflector right on the front. Little light reflector so that cars can see me and other mm -hmm. people can see me. Mm -hmm. Little reflector okay. light. Does your monster also have two wheels? Yes. And pedals? Yes. And handlebars with tassels? Yes, yes, yes. Ryan, you're thinking of a bike. Yes! No, we're supposed to be thinking of a monster, something that's scary. We're trying to choose our monster. Greg, I'm super scared of bikes. I don't know how to ride them well. And I want one. I thought we're think I thought we're choosing Hong a Kong monster. Hong Kong horn. <laughs> how, how I, I met, met my monster. monster. By Amanda Knoll, illustrated by Howard McWilliam. Thanks for watching Storytime with Ryan Lagarde. And Craig Tovey. And now it's time for <gasps> Shoutouts! Let's get shouted! Nora and Whitney, Holiday Shores, Illinois. Lucas, you're in Midland, Ontario, Canada. <clears throat> Saul, Joseph, Noah, Elena, Killeen, Texas. Mrs. Alexander's first grade class, Sonora Elementary. Hey, Sonora! Mrs. Walter's reading class, Colburn Woods Elementary, Georgia. Miss B's second graders, Kennedy Elementary School, Oklahoma. Oklahoma. Okay. okay. Mrs. Roche's class, Austin, Minnesota. Mm, you thought it was gonna be Texas. It's not, it's Minnesota. Minnesota. So Mrs. Roche's class in Austin, Texas, no <laughs> shout out for you. <laughs> Ollie and Elo in Port Moody, Canada. Miss Stickney's 3-4 class, in Canada. 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 I cannot keep doing this. <laughs>